Oh my god! Oh! Mmm! Holy shit! Hola, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing today? Oh, my name is Brendan Reviews, and well, I just recently did a poll a few days ago asking what movie you guys want me to do next for the Iceberg Chronicles. And yeah, I knew once I put this movie on that as a fucking option, it was probably going to get the most votes. And sure enough, it did. That movie was Solo. 120 Days of Sodom. I've heard a lot, man. <laughs> I've heard a lot about this movie. I'm not looking forward to it, just because it it's supposedly based in some sort of fact. Like apparently this is kind of based on the true, uh, based on a true story of four guys during the end of World War II who just kidnapped a whole bunch of men and women and forced them to go through all this sexual torture and shit just for the fuck of it because their country was about to be fucking taken over. And well, here I am. Right now, waiting for the movie to complete downloading, and then we're gonna watch it. So, oh fuck, Solo, 120 Days of Solo, who the fuck even made that name? I don't know what the fuck Solo even means. Actually, I'm gonna look that up, what the fuck does Solo even mean? <laughs> when you look up what Solo means, it means fucking bacon. It means bacon or lard. All right, I'm waiting for this lard ass of a movie to fucking load. Back at it again. Cannibal Holocaust was tier three, Solo's tier three. We're just gonna call tier three the McDonald's tier. <laughs> Fuck, not bacon. Mm. Mm. I love that square dry egg. That sticky warm cheese. That meaty bacon those buttered biscuits. Guys, I fucking cracked myself up. Oh, who am I kidding? <laughs> Three, two, one. Boys, I'm so excited. <laughs> Alberto Grimaldi. Un film de Pier Paolo Pasolini. Sada or Le Johanne de Chadema. I feel like Captain America dancing with Peggy Carter right now. This is kind of like another one of those Cannibal Holocaust situations where like the music starts off very nice and calm and debatably beautiful and then it just launches you head first into a complete de de depravity basically. Oh man, I'm ready. I'm fucking ready! Fuck, this is fucking cold. I waited too long to start filming that. This is fucking cold. P. Piano Pasolini. Pasolini. <laughs> so these three boys on their bikes all of a sudden just like stroll up uh, upon their house and they know that these fucking soldiers are after him. Who the fuck is that? He's already fucking dead. Whatever that is, at least I think. Maybe he's dead. I don't know. Whatever. So, okay, we just got shown that a whole bunch of men have been taken. Oh, this is beautiful, wherever the fuck they're filming this. Is this Germany? Is this actually Germany? And damn, that was a fucking thick ass Lukey he just like spit in her fucking face. Here we go. So I guess the president's daughter is getting married to the, I don't know, one of the other guys, and then their daughter's getting married to the president. And just for context, all four of them are like the something. Like one of them's the president. Is one of them like the priest or what the fuck? All right, so we got the bishop, the president, the duke, and the magistrate. <laughs> 
sarebbe il caso di osservarvi un po' meglio. Spogliatevi. Oh shit. Should we examine them closer? Dear God. That's a lot of happy faces for some what I presume to be male genitalia. Are we actually gonna see it? Oh god. Oh, oh god. Oh. oh fuck. Awesome. God fucking hell. <laughs> oh why do, why do all these movies have to show like somebody's dick? <laughs> Man, some of those boys look super young, like fucking 10 years old. Like, look at that fucker over there in the back, it looks like a damn gnome. Why does that guy constantly have like a cross-eyed, like, shit-eating grin? He's always like... That's what that take. So, so far we've had only boys, maybe a few girls, like, actually taken. Oh, I guess now it's girl star in our mind. Man, how much did these actors get fucking paid? Because they're we're not even like we're not even like fifteen minutes into the movie and we're already getting like people just undressing completely. <laughs> oh, oh, he's making a break for it! Go, 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 go! Get out! No. Honestly, from what I know about this movie, he probably got the best death. So far, this movie for being made in 1975, actually, like, just from a filmmaking perspective, so far is actually pretty good. It, like, the cinematography looks good, the acting is so far pretty decent. I'm, like, surprised, actually, that the, the movie actually has as many decent attributes to it. As it does. Like, it, it's not as amateuristic, it's not as, like, old feeling as I was expecting, you know? God, why the fuck are those boys in the back looking like gnomes? What the fuck? I can't get over that. They look like fucking gnomes walking up the damn stairs. Ew, so they, they bring these women in to fucking tell stories? To quote-unquote stir up the imagination. You know, for a movie called 120 Days of Sodom, I'm not really seeing any sodomy. <laughs> fucking hell, I'm gonna probably kill myself after this fucking thing. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hey, that was a bit excessive. Even she knows that was a bit excessive. Any man found having sex with a woman will be punished by the loss of a chim. The slightest religious act committed by anyone will be punishable by death. Damn! Alright, man. No fucking Christianity, Catholicism, Judaism, Buddhism, Islam. Like, none of it. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, this is one of those stories, ain't it? <laughs> he takes some monstrous penis out of his pants. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Does not desire a woman's anus. Oh God! Swallowed my piss to the last drop. I just like the sudden bursts of nudity every now and then. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Jesus Christ, the president's a fucking creep. Dear God. Dear God. I did not need to fucking see that. Is it a problem to say that I'd rather see a fucking kid get slaughtered than these fucking just complete disgusting human beings have sex with each other and flash their like asses and dicks at each other? I don't even understand how the hell that just happened. Like what the hell does the song have to do with anything? So they're gonna learn how to hold a penis. So that girl killed herself, or whatever, she's dead, fucking slit throat, 
so this is this bitch has just been through it all like fucking hell I just am so fucking confused uh, on what the fuck is going on <laughs> I don't even know at what point where I just went huh it's not, something's not adding up <laughs> so what the two of them are getting married or becoming a couple yeah look at that and they're all fucking naked wow God damn, he's just all over him. For what fucking reason? Ugh, I don't like this. I don't like any of this at all. God, he's just gripping anybody and everything. Fucking immensely, like, turned on. Jesus. I mean, I used to make a joke saying that the manliest thing you could do is like men, but dear God. <laughs> It actually takes it to a whole other level. What's going on? Okay, so there are, seem to be undressing. Uh, so the two of them are going to be forced to fuck. So virginity is reserved for them. God damn. Every fucking time something goes down, so these guys start sticking like their dick in somebody else's butt. Oh my god. Oh, another fucking one of these stories. Dear god. Wh what the fuck? Well, this just kind of came out of nowhere. What is going on? They're all acting like fucking dogs? Why are they even feeding them? I can't even tell, like, the thickness of it. Like, I can't tell if it's, like, meat or something. Damn! Oh, fuck! So are the two of them taking a liking to each other? I mean, that's what it seems like, at least. I can definitely see why this movie is controversial, though. Especially for 1975. I mean, like, it, being gay at the time was so taboo. Being, um, like, having homosexual feelings for another male. Yeah, it was so taboo at the time. I mean, nowadays, you, you see it, you know, it's quite... You know, like, if it's not that it's quite common, it's that, like, you know... Like, homosexuals have come out, and that's a lot more commonplace, and, like, I'm just, like, surprised at, like, how much of it is in this movie, because, like, you, you just, you, you didn't see shit like this in 1975. I mean, that was literally after the tail end of the Civil Rights Movement. It's a little interesting, like, thing to point out, because it's certainly different, and especially uh, since this movie takes place in 1945, it definitely feels a little bit different. It feels a little bit more, I don't know if I'd say like authentic, but it feels more like genuine because of course, like, <laughs> like homosexuals did not fucking exist only in like the modern era. They've been around forever. As soon as people started developing feelings and sexual tendencies towards each other, yes, of course. And yeah. It's a little just thing I noticed about this movie so far. Jan Trela Mechter. What is it? Her turn to start telling stories now or something? <sighs> Man, what? Like this is what the fifth fucking story so far. And st I, you know, I was thinking about doing like you know like another cock counter or doing like another like maybe butt counter or like I don't know anal counter, <laughs> but I think I should just do a story counter because of how ridiculously, like, how re the ridiculous amount of stories there are in this. She fucking shit and swallowed it, and the guy that she had dressed up like a diaper fucking came to... <sighs> Why do I have a feeling I'm like, I know where this is going? Let me guess, the next scene in this movie has to do with something with our, our kidnapped individuals doing something with shit, like maybe rubbing it on themselves or, I don't know, fucking eating it, drinking, diet. Oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, I can taste the McDonald's in the back of my throat. Oh, God. Oh, 
ele, ele da minha época velha. In avanti piccola, è pronto, in ginocchio però, va! Before it's too late! No, don't do it! Don't fucking do it! Don't even think about it, fuck this! No, I don't wanna see it. I don't wanna see it. Thankfully I'm not like able to like gag or anything because I can tell it's fake but just the idea of it is still fucking disgusting. <laughs> that's it. That's the line. Yep. They're gonna fucking eat shit. I f Oh god. Oh. Oh no, a coffin in the center of the fucking room. So, did she fuck a dying man? And then once she was done having sex with him, she buried him, or no, put him into the coffin, and then the guy had also said to her that um, once he's put into the coffin, she can do whatever he wants with her. Or whatever she wants with him. Marvelous ass, he cried. I have no words. Damn. What makes you think I'd kill you? We'll kill you a thousand times. So this makes now the seventh story. I'm kind of getting sick of the fucking stories. Like, really sick of them. Oh my god. Circle of blood. What the fuck? Are they all dressed up in dresses? Or these kinds of gowns or whatever the fuck they're in. Why are they dressed up like that? This fucking movie's batshit crazy and I don't know what to like truly think about it. Play that, play that accordion. <laughs> Like, the goat heads on the shoulders are actually very creepy. Uh. Uh. I just don't need to be seeing this right now. God. Somebody has a fucking photo under their pillow. Oh my god, so everybody just has a secret about someone or something. I know she keeps a photo. I know that these two are fucking. I know that this soldier goes and meets with the black maid. Oh my god! Dear God. Holy shit, they just unloaded on him. Oh, are they gonna kill the maid? Holy shit. Things just got real very quickly. I'm so fucking done with these fucking stories. So the first thing like I noticed in this part is like obviously there's only like a few of them left a lot or left in this room. My guess is that the rest of them are fucking dead. What did her So now it's all about death, I'm assuming? To kill as many as possible? I don't know. I don't know what the hell the where I don't know where this is all going. Just genuinely Oh my god! Oh! Mmm! 
Holy shit. So all of them are being condemned to just this awful fucking death. Oh no, they're all getting a chance to like fucking be an observer. Oh fuck, the scalp it. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that's the opening music. Um, something. I, I that that's all I really got to say. That was something. Um, I guess without further ado, uh, let's just hop on into it. So starting off with the quality and production. So there's actually a lot of good attributes to this movie that I will give it right off right right off the gate. So I'll say that the director, who uh, Pasolini did a pretty good job with this movie. I would say that the movie very well made, uh, very well shot, the acting's decent. Honestly, like it's not that bad of a movie just simply in a filmmaking aspect. The story is somewhat like there and a lot of it is of course for shock, but I mean at least all of like what happens kind of has to play into like the dehumanization of everybody because the continual breakdown of everything. Yeah, but my biggest fucking complaint though that is definitely gonna hit hard on the quality of production is how many goddamn stories there are this is a fucking ridiculously long movie because of the stories this movie is fucking two hours long and there are eight stories I'm, no I'm enthralled by just the amount of fucking stories that are in here and because by the end of it I was just done I wanted the movie to get done I wanted the movie to fucking finish for the quality of production I'm gonna give a one out of two. Seriously, I fucking hated those stories. Moving into realism. So, from what I can see online, the fucking movie isn't necessarily based on any true story, but it is based on a book. So, we have to look at it as a fictional thing. Could this thing ever fucking exist in the real world? Yeah, I could see something like this going down. I mean, think about it. Human trafficking is a fucking thing, and whores and pimps do exist in today's world. It's not like as if it's some fictional fairy tale, some urban legend that you hear about American culture, any culture out there in the world. This shit actually does exist. Human trafficking does exist. So it doesn't surprise me about the idea of somebody kidnapping a whole bunch of men and women and holding them in their house and subjecting them to sexual torture and various different kinds of psychological warfare. And yeah, it doesn't surprise me whatsoever. I mean, overall, the fucking realism I mean, it's not too great. Like, I can't imagine that there'd be this many people complying with it. Like, really, you're gonna get women to come in here and tell you stories to get you all aroused so that way you can do shit to these people later on? Yeah, I mean, all that seems pretty unrealistic to me, but I mean, as a whole, it's just, it, it, it has some sort of grounding. Like, I could see it working. I could see it actually happening. So, overall, for realism, I'm gonna go ahead and give it like a, 1.25 out of 2. Like, it's possible, but it's a little bit outlandish. Anyways, moving on to gore score. I mean, what the fuck do you expect? It's a 2 out of 2. I'm, just the amount of just disgusting shit that goes on in this. And I don't even mean, like, anything along the lines of, like, sex or whatever. I just mean, like, the shit. Piss. Whipping the shootings, the scalping at the end, the fucking branding of the nipples. God, yeah. Moving on. 2 out of 2 for that. And creep factor. Oh. So, is this really that creepy? It's shocking. It's definitely shocking, but if it... Honestly, I feel like this movie would be a little bit more creepy if some of the events were a little bit more intense and um, there was music over top of it. I feel like if 
there was that, like it would help to set in better. But honestly, the lack of music at times does play to its favor because it does make it feel like, you know, a little bit more realistic. It feels like as if you were somebody spectating this room and just watching it go down. And of course, some of the shit that does go down is extremely heartbreaking, extremely unsettling, and it gets to you. And I mean, honestly, this movie is more unsettling than it is um, not creepy or whatever. It really does achieve its goal at being a very sick fucking movie. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it is pretty bad. I'm gonna go ahead and give for the creep factor a three out of four. So with a one out of two on the quality of production, a 1.25 out of two on the realism, a two out of two on the gore score, and a three out of four on the creep factor, that brings Silo 100 Tony Days of Sodom to a 7.75 out of 10, which is a which is a creepy rating. And I mean, I, overall, I mean, I wouldn't say like this movie is the most creepy movie I've ever seen, but literally, it's it does pack a punch and yeah this movie is gonna stick with you for a little bit I feel like this movie's gonna stick with me for probably the next day just like damn that was like a lot to take in it's not slightly unnerving it's definitely unnerving but am I majorly scared by it no so I think creepy just is the best like line that we can place it at best placement for it that's solo the 120 days of sodom do i recommend it i mean if you're a sick fuck like me sure but um for the just average movie goer i definitely do not recommend it it is a lot to stomach even for 1975 like effects and all that yeah it's still a lot to stomach and there's a reason why the director was killed for the release of this movie so yeah anyways my name is brendan reviews and i will see you guys next with next video is gonna be the guinea pig movies one and two because those are the only two that like really matter overall in that series so my name is brendan reviews and i hope you guys have a great evening i would have fucked time you guys are watching this and oh mr krabs take it away subscribe to brendan reviews or else i'll come to your house and eat your kids whoa